The creepiest places under the sea can be more unsettling than any other place on land because we don't know nearly as much about the ocean as we do about the surface. Only about 10% of the seafloor has been explored, but our limited research has shown us one thing for sure. There are some freaky things beneath those waves. It's the first time Mauricio has seen this shark here. From natural formations and trenches to things that are much bigger and much smaller, these videos tell us clearly the ocean is way scarier than you think. <coughs> Mermaid Down Under Tales of mermaids date back to the first written accounts of humanity, yet we haven't actually captured one. There does seem to be many photos and videos out there of so-called mermaid sightings, but this one from Australia is especially convincing. The video starts out simple enough, beautiful footage of an underwater scene in a coral reef complete with beautiful ocean plants and fish swimming around. Then suddenly, she appears. As the legend goes, a mermaid is a mythical sea-dwelling creature, often described as having the head and body of a woman and a fish's tail below the waist. This Aussie mermaid has both those things, but could it really be the half-human, half-fish real deal? Stories of mermaids have existed for thousands of years and span cultures across the world, from coastal settlements in Ireland to the landlocked Karoo Desert in South Africa. Perhaps they now prefer the waters down under these days. With such a rich and varied history, the symbol of the mermaid is as changeable as the sea itself. In some cultures, the mermaid signifies life and fertility within the ocean. In others, she lures sailors to their deaths, serving as an omen for storms, unruly seas, and disaster. This mermaid, however, looks harmless. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Attack of the Sea Serpent This clip of a boat ride at night was filmed off the coast of Rio Grande do Sul, Brazil's most southern state. But what's following this boat? The unidentifiable creature can be seen repeatedly leaping from the water as if it's chasing the vessel. Any ideas as to what this thing is? The creature is only just visible in the clip, thanks to two glowing eyes. It jumps out of the water like a dolphin, yet it almost slithers through the waves like a snake, and it only gets much more menacing as it catches up with the boat. Is it possible that a sea snake could be this big? Tales of sea serpents may be among the oldest stories of humankind, told in many parts of the world. Sea snakes are real animals, found in the Indian Ocean and Southern Pacific. The longest can grow to about 9 feet, impressive enough to give rise to legends. This thing looks like it could be a lot bigger. One animal known to be regularly mistaken for a sea serpent or sea monster today is the basking shark, the second largest fish in the ocean. It's strange and impressive sight. They swim with their large mouths wide open just under the waves with a long conical snout just above the ocean surface, so the nose can be mistaken for a snake's head and the glowing eyes only add to the fear factor. Does this boat go any faster? <laughs> Deep Blue Deep Blue is a legendary female great white shark that's estimated to be a massive 20 feet long and weighing two and a half tons. She was first spotted in Mexico. She's also been spotted in Hawaii and is the largest great white shark ever photographed. With massive fins and razor sharp teeth, it was quite an astonishing discovery for marine biologists. But despite her terrifying size, various videos have shown the shark to have been calm and non-aggressive around humans. White sharks are infamous for being the most dangerous and aggressive sharks in the ocean. And though Deep Blue is the biggest great white known to man, she does not have an aggressive personality. What a relief. Thanks to her girth, many scientists speculate that this shark was pregnant when she was discovered. While she's most often identified by her size, she also has quite a unique pattern on her underside where the white meets the gray, as unique to a white shark as our fingerprints are. She's pretty special already. Deep Blue is not the largest shark specimen in history. That award goes to the Megalodon, a prehistoric predator over 60 feet long that toured the world's oceans millions of years ago. <laughs> Gigantic Monuments Entitled Ocean Atlas, this beautiful installation makes a statement. It encourages coral colonization and deters tourists from endangered reefs. 
artist, photographer, naturalist, and diver, Jason DeCares Taylor introduced this record-breaking public sculpture to the crystal Bohemian waters in 2014. Ocean Atlas is Taylor's contemporary take on the ancient Greek myth of Atlas, a titan condemned to carry the heavens on his back for eternity. This statue is a young Bohemian girl sustaining the ceiling of the ocean. Taylor's website explains, as our oceans and coral reefs currently collapse from numerous threats including overfishing, habitat loss, ocean acidification, global warming, and water pollution. Forged from sustainable, pH-neutral materials designed to kickstart local coral growth, Ocean Atlas is a monumental public sculpture submerged almost 20 feet beneath the sea. Towering 18 feet tall and weighing in at more than 60 tons, Ocean Atlas is reportedly the largest sculpture ever deployed underwater. At low tide, the work reflects a mirror image on the underside of the sea's surface, and it's a favorite for divers around the world. And we can see why. <laughs> Ooh. Zemchug Canyon Welcome to the deepest submarine canyon in the world. It's also the widest too. Zemchug Canyon is deeper than the Grand Canyon, which is 6,093 feet. It has a vertical relief of 8,530 feet dropping from the shallow shelf of the Bering Sea. Now that's deep. Named after a Soviet research ship and a word meaning pearl, Zemchug Canyon cuts into the ocean floor at the western edge of the continental shelf one of the flattest and smoothest places on the planet. There are a number of theories as to what carved these giant cracks into the shelves, but the most prominent one states that sediment transport carved these canyons. Sediment transport in the sea occurs primarily as underwater landslides of enormous masses of rock and sediment, usually triggered by turbulent waters during a storm or ground movement from an earthquake. It's also believed that some canyons were carved above ground at a time when sea level was a mile or lower than it is today. And on top of being so deep, this canyon is also a vibrant ecosystem. Deep, cold, oxygen-rich waters well up from the deeps into the canyon, providing sustenance to an enormous array and variety of life forms. <laughs> Giant Rays with a diamond-shaped appearance and a huge fin that looks like a wing, manta rays glide through the water with an ease that bellies their size. Of all the fish in the sea, they have got to be amongst the most graceful and breathtaking creatures. Also known as birds of the sea, these huge fish have an average wingspan of 23 feet and a weight of about 4,500 pounds. Not only that, but manta rays actually have the largest brains out of all the fish in the world. But just how big can manta rays get? The largest manta ray ever recorded was much larger and reached a whopping 30 feet. Recorded in 1920, this huge manta ray even made it into the Guinness World Records as the largest manta ray ever recorded. The heaviest manta ray recorded was a female in 1933 who weighed in at around 5,000 pounds. Caught by Captain Kahn, a New York silk merchant in 1933 off the coast of New Jersey, the massive manta ray became tangled in the anchor line of his boat while he was fishing and towed him five miles over three hours while he feared his boat would capsize. Manta rays are usually found in tropical and subtropical waters and are migratory animals that largely follow where the food is. Ecuador currently has the largest individual population of manta rays. Lost at Sea Stuart B. told the Coast Guard he thought this is it after he was found 86 miles from shore off Port Canaveral on Florida's east coast recently, clinging to the bow of his boat. The sailor was missing at sea for two days before being rescued. His boat had been experiencing mechanical issues before it sank, but B. had been asleep when water gushed in the back and forced him up to the front as his vessel sunk beneath the waves. A small pocket of air was keeping just enough of the boat floating in the middle of the ocean. He said he had tried to reach equipment to raise a distress signal on the boat, adding, three times I tried to hold my breath and swim down and get it, but I couldn't reach it. He was reluctant to keep moving for fear of losing an air pocket in the cabin that kept the boat afloat. He had family raise the alarm when he did not return from his trip, saying it was unusual for him to stay on the water overnight. He was drifting in the open sea for two days, maintaining his stance at the top of his capsized boat to not make any single move as it may trigger his yacht to sink fully. Thankfully, the crew of a passing 225-foot container ship spotted B clinging to the boat and the crew rescued him from the water and brought him back to shore. 
Tire Graveyard Osborne Reef is an artificial reef off the coast of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. In the early 1970s, it was believed that using tires to build a reef would encourage new coral growth, attract more fish, improve local biodiversity, and benefit the local economy. Ultimately, millions of used car tires were bound together to create the substrate needed to expand the Osborne Reef. It was supposed to be the longest artificial coral reef in the world, but things did not go as planned. Over time, salt water corroded the restraints that held the tires together. In ocean currents, waves and storms turned loose tires into projectiles that moved with such force that they could cause irreparable damage to coral reefs and other marine ecosystems. Coral reef systems provide food, shelter, and breeding grounds for countless marine plants and animals. They also protect coastal communities from extreme weather, shoreline erosion, and coastal flooding while contributing hundreds of millions of dollars to our local economies. In 2007, after several false starts, cleanup efforts began when the United States military took on the project. In 2015, a civilian corporation took over and had finally removed one-third of the tires. But still, several hundred thousand of the estimated two million tires still rest in the coastal Florida waters. <laughs> Mysterious Mariana Trench It was found by utilizing sounding equipment in 1875 and it was named for the nearby Mariana Islands. It was named as a national monument in 2009. The Mariana Trench found in the western Pacific Ocean is the deepest part located in any ocean. It's a 1580-mile crescent-shaped section in the crust of the earth. Although it hasn't been well explored because of the challenges associated with going that deep, the trench goes at least 36,000 feet deep. If Mount Everest were ever placed in it, the peak of the mountain would still be more than one mile underwater. On top of that, the trench is believed to be one of the most ancient seabeds on the planet at approximately 180 million years old. And even here, life finds a way. Despite the lack of light and the hostile conditions in the trench, a surprising number of organisms live there. There are more than 200 known microorganisms and small creatures that call it home. And as more expeditions eventually explore the trench, it's almost certain new species will be discovered there. Every ocean is deep and mysterious in its own way. But compared to the Mariana Trench, some parts of the ocean look like the shallow end of a pool. The Yonaguni Monument The Yonaguni Monument wasn't discovered until 1987, and in that short time, it's already become a tourist attraction off Yonaguni Island, the westernmost island of Japan. Since then, Multiple geologists from Japan and around the world have gone on expeditions to the monument and studied it. Was it created by the forces of the earth and the ocean, or is it a relic of an ancient city? Scientists still argue. These submerged stone structures are believed by some to be the ruins of a Japanese Atlantis, an ancient city sunk by an earthquake about 2,000 years ago. The structures are believed to include the ruins of a castle, five temples, and at least one large stadium all of which are connected by roads and water channels and are partly shielded by what could be huge retaining walls. In total, the ruins cover an area spanning 984 feet by 492 feet, but according to other experts, the monument dates back to at least 5,000 years and are not man-made. The supporters of the natural formation theory are quick to point out two things. Sandstone formations with clear geometrical shapes are common and the monument exists in an area with extremely high earthquake activity. Do you think that's possible? Or does it look like the leftovers of a city from the past? Hmm. The Bloop In 1997, researchers listening for underwater volcanic activity in the southern Pacific recorded a strange, powerful, and extremely loud sound. They called it Bloop. It was an ultra-low frequency, high-amplitude underwater sound detected by the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Using underwater microphones that were placed more than thousands of miles apart across the Pacific, they recorded numerous instances of the noise, which was unlike anything they had heard before. Not only was it loud, the sound had a unique characteristic that came to be known as, yep, you guessed it, the bloop. Scientists were eager to discover the sound's origin, but theories varied. Was the bloop from secret underwater military exercises, ship engines, fishing boat winches, giant squid, whales, or some kind of sea creature unknown to science? Researchers continued an ongoing effort to study the sounds of the seafloor volcanoes and earthquakes. 
it was in Antarctica that they finally discovered the source of those thunderous rumbles from the deep. The bloop was the sound of an ice quake, an iceberg cracking and breaking away from an Antarctic glacier. <laughs> Mysterious Blue Holes Although they look mysterious and perhaps a little ominous, blue holes like these are submerged springs and sinkholes. They are formed by the erosion of carbonate rocks and appears as a dark blue circle of water in the ocean. Owing to their depth, blue holes appear darkish blue because of greater absorption of sunlight. This creates a dramatic contrast with the lighter blue of the shallows around them and forms a natural outline that can be easily seen from the surface. They're typically located in low-lying coastal regions which were once above sea level many thousands of years ago. When the sea level rose due to the melting of glaciers, some of these holes became submerged. The deepest blue hole in the world at 987 feet deep is in the South China Sea and is named the Dragon Hole. The second deepest blue hole in the world with underwater entrance at 663 feet is Dean's Blue Hole, located in a bay west of Clarence Town on Long Island, Bahamas. Exploring blue holes requires a level of competence and equipment appropriate to the depth and overhead penetration. As for attempts to reach the bottom of a blue hole, the Red Sea Blue Hole located in Egypt is nicknamed the Diver Cemetery because at least 40 divers have died there. <laughs> Icy Finger of Death You're probably not ever going to go diving in the waters off Antarctica or in the Arctic near the North Pole, but if you ever do, there's a chance that you may come upon one of the more bizarre sights in nature, a brinicle. Basically, a brinicle is a hollow tube that projects downward from the ice pack on the ocean surface. Imagine an icicle hanging on your house's roof gutter, except that a brinicle's length may be measured in feet instead of inches, and instead of rainwater, it's formed from a super salty seawater solution called brine. Brinicles form because when seawater along the ocean surface freezes to form ice, it exudes salt, that increases the salinity of nearby water, which in turn lowers its freezing point, so that it stays liquid even though it's really, really cold. And they call it the icy finger of death for good reason. This rare nature event freezes and kills anything around it, once it touches the seabed. As it grows, it catches various bottom-dwelling creatures around it. They become encased in ice, completely frozen by the brine. Pools of super cold brine may also form and remain beneath the site of brinicle formation. These so called black pools of death can also be deadly to small sea creatures that swim through them. Hairy Frogfish This bizarre being isn't a mythical sea monster, it's a hairy frogfish, and its appearance isn't its only odd trait. These animals may be excellent at hiding in plain sight. However, they do something that really makes them stand out from a lot of other sea creatures. The fish, which usually grow about four inches long, don't swim. Instead, they walk on their wide fins along the seafloor as they look for snacks to eat. The hairy frogfish is covered in spines. These spines, which resemble strands of hair, allow the marine animal to camouflage itself against coral and seaweed. Found mostly in warm waters around the world, the hairy frogfish can also change its color to blend in with its surroundings. To hunt, the fish swishes through the water just above a cluster of coral on the seafloor, and they're formidable predators. Hairy frogfish can open their mouths extremely wide, which allows them to suck in their prey whole. No chewing required by this critter. When it comes to meals, hairy frogfish aren't too picky. They chow down crustaceans and other fish, such as flounder. But if it tries to swallow something larger than its stomach can cope, it has to spit it back out. A lucky escape for the victim, which will often be able to swim away, a little dazed by the attack. Killer Flatworms There are about 20,000 species of these bizarre worms, and they're a diverse group. From tapeworms that can infect humans to larger seafaring worms capable of regrowing their entire bodies should be unlucky enough to get chopped in half. Like other marine flatworms, it can propel itself through the water by undulating the edges of its body in a wave-like motion, and they glide around the shores like liquid death. They're ferocious predators, and they're common in every ocean around the world. Plus, they're very, very flat, and being flat has its advantages. They can get into almost every kind of nook and cranny to get their food. With no body cavity or specialized respiratory or circulatory organs, flatworms rely on diffusion to acquire their oxygen. Their flattened shape helps allow more nutrients and oxygen to pass through their bodies. 
and once they grab hold, it's a wrap. They're well known as a formidable predator. Flatworms are usually more active when it's dark when they skim the ground with elegant ruffles of their body edges or even swim short distances in the water. So to see one like this in the day is a rare sight indeed. So what do you say? Are you more afraid of the ocean after seeing these videos? At least you're better informed. But even though the seas on our planet are full of mystery, it's almost impossible for many of us to not take a deep dive and go deeper. Mm-hmm. <laughs>